we see a button that says donate now, um, please do so. Um, uh, help your cat daddy out. Uh, help him help some cats out, just like these guys. Let's, let's just show more pictures here. Look at these guys, man. Look at these guys. Oh my God, my heart is so bursting at the seams right now. Because it was just a long 24 hours or however long it was. We're just so psyched, dude. We're so psyched. In the meantime, let's say hi to people here. Robin Ness, we're here. Uh, Sid Dominguez Rogers. beautiful dreamers welcome back to my channel today I have a very special guest this is Ellie and she used to be a feral kitten she was born in the wild and what I'm gonna do is tell you the difference between stray and feral kittens how you can help and all that good stuff so let's get into the video so I have a lot of topics to talk about, so I'm going to try to keep this video short. Hopefully it doesn't get too long, but I have so much to talk about. Cats are my all-time favorite animal ever. I love them so much. I'm so passionate about these I'm looking at Ellie. I'm so passionate about you, Ellie, and your species. Uh, I remember the first thing I ever wanted to be when I grew up was a cat. Until, you know, it's not humanly possible to become a cat. This is Ellie. She was caught at six weeks of age. Her and Meowth were together by the pool, you know, under the pool deck. And Ellie was the first one that was caught. Meowth is the one that took off, which we caught her a few weeks later. And then we reunited them. And they love each other. They're very close and bonded. The first thing I want to talk about is stray cats versus feral cats. What is the difference? Most people think they're one and the same, but they're not. A feral cat is actually a cat born in the wild. It has no interaction with humans. They fear humans and they live in a clouder. A clouder is a community of wild cats. You know, you might see them around your apartments or uh, behind grocery stores. That's a clouder. Now, what is a stray cat? A stray cat is a cat who has human interaction and was basically a house cat that might have, you know, escaped and never found its way home. It might have been kicked out of its home by the owner. A lot of people, when they move, leave their cats behind and think it can fend for itself. Uh, most of these cats do end up dying, sadly. So, yeah, um, don't kick your cat out of your house. <laughs> this is... This is Meowth. And she was a feral kitten. I, I got her at about... Let's see how old were you, Meowth? She was, I'm going to say she was about 8 weeks old, which was the perfect time for her to be tamed and socialized with humans. And she... When we found Ellie, Meowth was the one that ran away, and so we weren't able to grab her. And for a few weeks I tried to catch Meowth, but I just could not catch her at all. She was very fast. She was alone. Uh, it was tiny, not as tiny as Ellie when I finally caught her, but she still was, you know, in the wild longer than than Ellie was. And what's the matter, baby? Telling your story. I'm gonna say it took about a month for her to finally start trusting me enough, you know, to what's the word I'm looking for? You know, to respond to humans. How can you tame that little innocent fur ball you found outside? <laughs> so you managed to catch a feral kid, huh? Well, how can you tame this cat? Uh, well, food. All cats are food motivated. All of them. <laughs> Toys. A cat cannot resist a toy. 
So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have a routine. You're going to want to uh, fill the, the bowl up. Well, first of all, you're going to want to put your cat in a, a small room, maybe a closet or a bathroom, away from your other cats. That way you can introduce them slowly. <clears throat> Let them sniff each other with having a barrier between them so they can't, you know, attack each other and have territory issues and all that. Um, so with Meowth, my little girl kitten that I caught, <laughs> she was in the closet. And she was in there for about a week. <clears throat> she was in there for about a week. And I would spend all my time in that closet. I would uh, play with her. I would feed her. And eventually she started coming out from behind the clothes and boxes. And then about a week later, I left the door open. She would still stay in the closet. Um, but she would start exploring the upstairs. And she would sniff like under the bed and start hiding under the bed. And then that's when I went down to floor level. I would actually lay on the floor, completely flat on my stomach, with my arm outstretched under the bed. And Meowth and I would uh, nap like that on the floor with my, with my paw. <laughs> with my hand touching her paw. I have paws. So, yeah, I'm a cat. I always wanted to be a cat. Um, okay, so what was I talking about before I got distracted? It's the hairspray. It goes to my brain sometimes. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yes, okay. Yeah, I would lay on the floor. And then eventually Meowth started going downstairs. And then I would go downstairs with her. And I'd be watching, you know, TV. And then I'd be eating on the, uh, the couch watching TV. And then Meowth would start jumping up on the couch to be near me. And then, of course, food motivated. So the very first food she ate was yogurt. <laughs> uh, uh, which gave her massive diarrhea, by the way. And, um... So yeah, just make it a routine. Feed, play with them, interact, talk to them, sing to them, anything you can think of, do it. <laughs> now with potty training, it took me out about, I'm gonna say it took her second day. She didn't go potty the first day. Uh, I would take her out of the closet and I'd put her in the litter box. And she got it on her third try. At first she jumped in, I put her in, and she jumped out. And then I put her back in, and she's like, well, I guess I should do my business in here. So she did it. The third time, she did it on her own. Ellie, on the other hand, it only took her twice, uh, two times, to learn how to use a box on her own. So cats are very smart, and litter box training is not hard at all. Yesterday, she was a feral cat. And now, she's an indoor cat. You're very fortunate, Ellie. I can't believe you're living on the streets. You're just so tiny. You're doing so well adjusting. <laughs> can't believe her progress. It's only her second night with human contact. She's doing fantastic. Yes, you are, princess. You're doing fantastic. She even potty trained herself. Yes, you did! Overnight! You're so smart! You're so smart, Ellie! Oh, <laughs> Everything's a toy. Another way you can help control the feral population is your own cat. Start with your own cat. Um, you can spay them. Spay your cat or neuter your cat. Especially if you have an indoor-outdoor cat or an outdoor cat. Uh, a little fact, indoor cats are much healthier, they live longer lives, they live uh, at least up to 14, 15 plus years if they don't go outside. An outdoor cat, 50% of kids will die outside. Um, and male cats generally live about a year to two years and then they you know, end up dying a lot of times because they're out to look for a mate and then you know that means crossing roads and they're most likely to get squished. So spay, neuter your cat. Your cat, I cannot stress it enough. Uh, it's not as expensive as it used to be. All you need is a rabies shot, uh, and that's not expensive. And you can find low income places. Uh, my cat, Pearl, I have four cats. Uh, Pearl, she was, I found, uh, after a lot of research, I found a clinic that's better for $6. And that includes a rabies shot. Look around, you can find great deals, and even sometimes they do it for free. 
So there's no excuse not to spay or neuter your cat. And again, don't let them outside because they can get sick. They can get, um, you know, like parasites and infections. And then that just is another vet bill for you. Let's do a mouth. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Pretty girl. You need to get your baby shot? I'm looking for murder. I got a headset bad, just gotta get you in trouble. You trying to groom yourself? You in trouble grooming yourself, baby? What are you purring about? So I'll start to lick her ear. Oh, baby. <laughs> Does that taste good? Oh, that's funny. You're funny. Hey, you tricked me. <laughs> Another way you can help keep the population down is TNR. That is trap, neuter, return. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to go to your pet shelter. You're going to use some of their uh, cat cages. You're going to set those cat cages out in your cat clutter. And wait till nighttime. You're going to put food in there, wait till nighttime. The cat's gonna come into the trap, wind food, get stuck in there, and then you're gonna take that uh, cat to a clinic, and they're gonna neuter or spay it. And if I believe correctly, I think, I'm not sure if everyone does it, but they tip, they uh, clip the tip of the ear, like this much. And that basically means that cat has been trapped and neutered, and so you don't have to catch it again. Um, I believe it's left ear. I think it, if I, read, if I remember correctly, it's left ear. Um, so if you see a cat with a clipped ear, that's feral, I'll just leave it alone. He doesn't need to be trapped again. Okay, so, and then once that cat has been neutered, you'll care for it for about a day or two to make sure there's no infections with the incision. And then you're gonna release that cat back into the wild, back into its home. And that controls your cat community by so much. You know, cats, can breed like crazy, especially in warm climates where they breed year round, like in California. There's so many cats, so little shelters. And most kittens, most people think, here's a kitten, I'm saving it, I'm gonna take it to the shelter. And it's gonna get adopted because it's so cute and young, who's not gonna want it? Wrong. That kitten is most likely to be put down. Uh, more kittens are put down than adults because people just don't have the time or resources to take care of a kitten, especially uh, under two weeks old. Uh, if it's a newborn, a lot of people just use them, euthanize them because they're so time consuming. You, you have to bottle feed it every two to four hours. You have to stimulate its bowels so it can relieve itself. A newborn kitten cannot produce heat and they can't go bathroom. So like I said, it's, you got to stimulate it every so often, um, which is what the mother cat does. And people at shelters, they don't have the time, the resources. Uh, they don't have the space, so they're going to euthanize those kittens. And at least 50% of them, are they die out in the wild. So, um, you know, spay your cat, TNR them, it's going to help the population so much. And it's going to protect your birds, your wildlife, less cats out in the wild. <laughs> um, I love cats so much, I'm so passionate about them. And it's kind of a burden because, like I said, I want to help every cat in the world, but I'm just one person, so I can't. So how can you help? How can you help feral cats? Uh, in winter, you can do shelters. You can do them year-round. Uh, you don't want to get a cardboard box and put it outside because a cardboard box will uh, get soggy from the rain or if you have snow, and that's not going to help anybody. It's going to be cold, wet, gross. Uh, I have cat fur. I'm, my lipstick. Um, by the way, cat fur is an accessory. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can't live without it <laughs> if you have cats. So it's an accessory, not a problem. 
anyway, um, you can also donate to your favorite animal charities. For example, my favorite animal charity is the Jackson Galaxy Foundation. I try to donate at least once a year, and you know, I'm not rich, I'm a stay at home housewife, uh, pet mother, and so you know, just my husband is working, and so I'm not rich, but uh, I try to donate at least once a year what I can. Uh, it could be, you know, just five dollars. Anything you can do will help. Another way you can help is, especially in winter, um, look under your cars. You know, cats can get squished by tires. Cars are nice and warm, and a cat is drawn to that warmth. So always check under your car. Check sometimes even under the hood, uh, behind the tires. Uh, just check your car out because you never know if the cat's going to be there and you're actually going to smush that poor cat and then that's going to weigh heavy on your conscience for the rest of your life. You have cat blood on your hands forever. So I want to talk a little bit about Ellie and about Meowth. Uh, I'm sure this video is very long. <laughs> but um, and thank you for your patience and for watching and for keeping up with me this long in this video. But Ellie, she is, uh, she's right here. Let me put the there she is. <laughs> I'm sorry to move the camera. So basically, I want to tell you how Ellie is different from Meowth. Meowth was in, uh, she was more feral for a few, more, a few more weeks than what Ellie was. But Ellie on the other side is more wild than what Meowth is. Meowth is very lovable. She is very talkative, very loyal. She is a mama's girl. All my girls are mama's girls. All my cats. Ellie, on the other hand, is a little more independent. She is a hunter. I used to have uh, budgies, and I had to get rid of my birds because Ellie decided that she wanted to try to kill one of my birds. And she would always, you know, be at the cage pawing it. And she taught Meowth how to hunt the birds while they were in their cage. So I'm not gonna get rid of the cats, obviously. So bye bye birds, <laughs> which is why I don't have birds anymore. And so yeah, Ellie's a little hunter. Uh, I kind of want to get a hamster, but I think she would probably harass it. So I don't think I can have any hamsters right now or mice, even though I love mice. I love hamsters, I love rats and guinea pigs and all that. But I can't guarantee their safety. Maybe in the future, if I have my own, um, my own. No, I don't ever want to think about that. Because if I had my own place, my sister wouldn't live with me, and Ellie wouldn't live with me. I'd be so sad. Because Ellie and Meowth are, a, they're bonded. They play, they have this little play ritual they do where they talk and coo to each other. They go, <laughs> and then Meowth goes, <laughs> and they do it the exact same way, it's so cute. All right, so I'm trying to ramble. This video's going on forever. I'm the kind of person that if I watch an animal show or any animal video on YouTube of a cat getting hurt or whatever, I start crying. And then but, and if I see a happy cat, if I get a happy home, then I cry more. <laughs> I'm just so in love with cats. It's ridiculous. But it's also a burden because I want to save them all and there's always so much I could do. Alright, that is it for this video. I am rambling because I don't know why. And I will see you in the next video. And I hope this video was informative. And remember that cats are friends and not food. <laughs>